Bonjour everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to take you with me in a week in my life in the springtime in Burgundy here in France. So I hope you enjoy. Meanwhile, in our future kitchen, Olaf and our Dutch friend Pascala, who always comes to help at the building works, are making huge progress. I am currently helping my American friends find a house here and they found one on internet so my friend and I decided to go check it out, not with the realtor for now but just to see how it's situated and how the vibe is 
and we stumbled upon a man working outside of a house and we wanted to talk to him to ask about the neighborhood and then it turned out that his house was for sale as well and he said oh if you want to come look inside well we went to look inside and I filmed it to show my friends how the average fixer-upper in the French countryside looks. There, this must be it then. Yeah. yeah. We do have a really nice view past that house there and through there. Don't know if you can see it. And it's a very, what do you think? Let me have somebody else's opinion. Yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> Nay. Oh, no. You're not you. No, but the vibe is really <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, the vibe here. is good. Vibe is really good. Just listen how peaceful it is. Okay. But this will give you a feel. Um, original floors, so definitely no insulation. Look. This is probably what most house will look like. I don't think they were living here, so this was just kind of like storage. All of this would need to go. There's beams underneath here. This is just from smoke and soot from the from the fireplace, so you would need to have to take all of this down. It has a very old electrical thing that would need to go. Um, yeah, and see, so it's all stone walls. But it's another blank slate, really. Yeah. This is very low though. Yeah, so that was the house that I talked about. It's not the house that my friends are interested in. I'm visiting that next week with an architect for them. And I might be filming, I may not be sharing that, I don't know yet. Um, depends on what my friends want as well. I am taking you back to my garden now because I need to do a project that I've been putting off for two years and you'll see that is very necessary that I'm doing that this spring.
Oh, die band is lek. April can be very unpredictable weather-wise. This morning it is a lot colder. I am driving the van to the garage for a regular checkup and I've decided to walk back home and I'll take you with me.
This part of our front yard we haven't touched at all in the past five years. This, as you can see from where there is hardly any grass left, is a part that Olaf uses for building works. He makes his concrete here. You can see that bag that was filled with sand for making the concrete. But now that that bag is almost empty and we're really progressing with our building works, we want to try to make this look better because that little uh, door to the right is the entrance for our guests to the swimming pool. So I am finally going to try to make that garden look better. We will take that bag away and then maybe try to sow some grass seeds there. I picked some flowers on my walk just now and I am just going to put them in the ground and see what happens. Last year I picked so many wildflowers. I do that all spring, summer, fall and I put a couple just somewhere in the garden and they actually came back this spring. I saw them coming back up and starting to grow. So I'm just going to try that. The things that grow everywhere around us in the farm fields and next to the farm fields are the things that you know will do well in your area. I'm not a good gardener. I'm still learning, but these are the things I'm trying just to make my life a little easier. I have also decided to do a couple of things differently this spring and this summer I am going to plant some perennials in that garden bed. I'm still going to sow some flowers and I've already prepared some seedlings as well. But I'm going to try to make my garden a little less high maintenance because it's just too much with everything that we have to do.
And then my battery of my phone was dead, so I couldn't film the rest of it. But this is how it turned out. So to the left is the flowers that I just picked from my walk. And then the middle part is where I've sewn the cosmos that I harvested from the castle where I filmed last October. So I'm really curious to see if they do well. Yeah, but this already looks a lot better than it was. Now all we need to do is remove the bag with the sand and sow some grass here. This morning I'm cooking for a couple in my community. They are going through quite a hectic and busy time in their business and life. And I said to them, you know what, I'll just come bring you lunch a couple of times. So at least that's one thing less to worry about. And I know that you're eating well. So today I'm cooking um, a risotto for them with zucchini and truffle oil. And for dessert, I have made my raspberry and lemon clafouti. I have shared both of these recipes before in earlier videos, and you also find them in my cookbook if you have that. So I'm going to bring that to their office now, and I am leaving you with this. I have done a gazillion other things this week, but, you know, it will get boring if you see me, you know, fix another table or do another gardening thing. <laughs> so, of course, this is not my entire life, but it is what I do, what my days look like. And sometimes people tell me that is not a slow life because you're so busy. But to me, a slow life means that I can do things at my own pace that I don't have to get to an office in the morning where I need to sit behind a computer for eight hours and go back in a traffic jam back home, eat, sleep, and then the next day repeat that same thing, which is, like so many other people, what I've done for a very long time. So I will leave you with this quiet view of our lovely little piece of paradise. And I thank you, as always, so much for watching, and I will see you next week.